Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to my session and to the end of Tableau Conference, which, if you're like me, I kind of don't want it to end because there's so much we can learn from it. Uh, I am from Shawnee State University. I am presenting on using Tableau with our enrollment management data. Now, I chose that term because while it's easy to think of it under student affairs, we're not including the counseling data, we're not including the, for the most part, athletics data, we're not including some of the data that you, that's housed under student affairs, so really it's enrollment management data. Uh, when I was younger, I used to like the uh, Pick Your Adventures books. So I always want, with presentations, to know what I can use in my day-to-day -day life. So really with this presentation, hopefully, uh, if I convey it properly, you will learn kind of how to leverage the existing technology with your enrollment data. Now that also, that's the technology like Tableau, but also leverage the people that are already there. Because the people know the story. You just have to find the chatty ones. <laughs> One of the main concerns with our registrar and our director of student financial aid was how secure is the data. So it would give you a kind of a background on how we did the data governance, data security using Tableau, and how we're using it across campus, that it's not just one division or one department's data. It's really moving more towards the data inclusive campus. And then finally, how, how do we improve the outcomes? Uh, really, how is this used day to day? which there's a twist in that story, but you have to stay till the end to find that out. So really to give you a background, I have dual masters from Michigan State University and no, I do not follow football. I just root for whoever my grandpa likes, so I, I can't speak about the football team. Uh, as you can see, it's in criminal justice. Uh, from what I've heard of other IR people, you don't really go to get your degree in institutional research. So I really got into it because I was able to intern at Michigan State with our study abroad office looking at the health and safety data for uh, their travelers and it's like, oh, this is interesting. I want to help spread the data to everyone. And I've been at Shawnee State for over two years, which it's my first institution with institutional research. I basically came in on a year grant, and then thankfully, they're like, we like you, so we want to keep you. So I, apparently I didn't mess up too badly. And what I appreciate about my boss is he really saw the need for learning Tableau to be a self-taught process. I will admit, first year or so, it was him asking me, can I do something Tableau? And I say, sure, and when he leaves, I Google it. But I think that's one of the things I appreciate about the community is you can Google it and learn from uh, everyone in this room and everyone at the conference. Uh, one of the things that's not noted, I do have rescue animals that there are a couple of pictures of them in the slides. So <laughs> bear with that. With Shawnee State, we actually started off as a branch campus of Ohio University. We really had a advocate in the Ohio legislature, Vern Reif, who saw the need for a regional university where we were. And we just happened to be picked as the place to become a university. Uh, so we were founded in 1986. Uh, really, we view ourselves as a drill in Appalachia. Uh, you can actually go out of my office couple yards up the uh, flood bank and you can see the Ohio River. We are the last institution you see if you take US 23 into Kentucky. Uh, to give you a, because I figured I needed Tableau in my Tableau presentation, <laughs> to give you a map, we are basically right there on the uh, border of Ohio and Kentucky. Actually, our closest metropolitan area is Ashland, uh, which is about 45 minutes away. Uh, our student population, we're kind of rather small. Uh, last year we had about 3582 students. 
that's kind of the breakdown. And I think something that's been felt across higher ed is we did have a decrease in our enrollment. But weirdly enough, our demographics relatively stayed the same. So really, we are a undergraduate institution. We are a female institution. And we stayed about 15% minority population. So really, let's get into the meat of it, really what you all have been here for. So with our existing data warehouse, I've gotten reactions from either surprised or shocked that we kind of have a DOS-based system right now. <laughs> uh, we have Genzibar, uh, which I haven't met anyone that loves it. So, <laughs> but the systems are cars for single lookup. So student ID, if I had to double check a student's ethnicity or a student's uh, gender, then I would just use cars. Cognos is what we use day to day. It pulls everyone based on years, semesters, whatever you want. Has some challenges. So with the dashboard that I'll be showing later on, what we found with Tableau, which my boss has been at Shawnee for over eight years, and he really was instrumental in implementing Tableau at Shawnee State. But the dashboard really condenses a lot of information down. And I know that's a bunch of numbers, so I was trying to figure out how to demonstrate it. So if you take that number of papers, it's really just 14.4 feet. If you stack those, stack those lovely uh, 500 count sets of copy paper, so Shawnee State is also the home of the bears. And with an average black bear, it's six feet. So I really did not want to try to stack a bear, <laughs> kind of safety. But uh, to demonstrate that, so you get a high amount of data, but you're able to condense it and use it across your institution. This is how our data was. So really, human resources controlled human resource data. Finance and administration controlled finance data. We were lucky to get some of that out. Uh, the Registrar Student Business Center, which is our consolidation of financial aid and admissions, they really controlled their data. They were the ones who uploaded it into Cognos, and then we just pulled it from there. So we really were kind of like the wall between the end users and all the extra data. Uh, yeah, our lovely data request process with Genzibar. Basically, we would have to run reports each time we got a data request. So most of our time in the past was running these reports. And if we weren't careful, we would lose people we would lose our students from the report if we added too much to the report. So it really wasn't user friendly. So, <laughs> so we really had to find a way to go, OK, we can't be the institution that disappears students. <laughs> so what we did was mainly started by my boss. We implemented Tableau as a way to give the charts and tables and stuff to our end users, whether it's our president or provost, or even helping students learn Tableau so they have a, a technical skill that they can go into the workforce and say, hey, I'm trained in Tableau. I can make these pretty charts for you. Uh, and then we really just added one step to our data process. We looked at the technology we had, and we were like, OK, who's the data guardians? Who are the ones who's entering the data into Cognos, into our state reporting HEI? Can they be allies for us? So really went up to them and say, can you help me tell Shawnee State's data story? I said, I, my job is just to enter the numbers. You are the experts in the field. And now we have weekly kind of missed this week, but uh, weekly meetings 
to go over, we have these reporting requirements, or I'm working on this dashboard, do you have extra data? Like we discovered our graduate report was, when we ran it from Cognos, was deleting at least 50 students. So if I was to report that out, I would be giving a different data story than the registrar. So she's now just giving us the report she submits to the state. So their main concern, protecting the data. Because really, no institution can survive if the data is harmed. Uh, with my undergraduate and graduate, I've gotten multiple uh, letters because of an administrator leaving a laptop in a car that got stolen or something that my data might have been uh, compromised, which I did not appreciate as a student. But it's also making sure that if the federal government looks or if the state looks, we can say we are protecting it this way. No one's able to get to the student level data. Uh, their main concerns were really who's accountable for it. Was it going to be our office? Was it going to be their office? Was it going to be the president? They wanted to know who's, who does it end with and how we provide the accurate and consistent data. So we also had directors of programs, deans of colleges maintaining their own data, which is great, but when it comes time for program review and we give them data and they are like, oh, this differs from mine, it creates a headache. So really, what's the end all data? And then again, protecting data security. So what we ended up, one of the reasons that we stuck with Tableau, especially since the state of Ohio is getting enterprise Microsoft BI, is because we're able to lock the data down, whether it's aggregating our data uh, with the new encrypting feature of, uh, in Tableau, using that, uh, making sure people can only download the image, not the data. Um, Really the best practices that we found uh, break up into the strong data governance and self-service. Uh, when my first conference was Tableau 17 in Vegas, and one of the presentations was about the web content accessibility guidelines, which I saw that there was the Create and Publish Accessible Dashboards in Tableau. Uh, if you had a chance to go to it, great. If not, I would highly suggest just going through the slides because it's things like uh, not having this speed go so quickly it causes seizures or having text as well as the colors, having it distinguishable, things that make it, the data go to everyone and not just a small group. So really, Three different levels to give my primer on it. There's the level A, which I attribute to the bronze. The triple A, I attribute to the gold standard. And then the double A, which I attribute to the silver. Now, I know the order it appeared. But if you read through the standards, they do have that triple A sometimes is not achievable for different things. So they even suggest you shoot for uh, level double A. So th this is a image of the dashboard that you'll be seeing. And to give you an idea, we really made it perceivable. Uh, so text alternatives, instead of just having to tell, OK, that's about 4,700, we have the numbers in there. Uh, understandable, we ha now we can do more with this dashboard to make it more accessible, but we have a description of what the dashboard is actually showing. Our goal plan is to put uh, white text so that the screen readers can pick up more information that describe what's going on, but a user that doesn't have to use a screen reader can still perceive it. So there's more that we can do Operable, that's a parameter that we use just so that you can see multiple charts on each screen. It doesn't move 
the charts so quick that you cause seizures. Uh, and people can set their own reading times. So if it takes them a while to view the data, great. Uh, we also have the lines so you can tell everything separate. I think that could be a little bit better because as you can see, 2013, 2014, it's kind of really close together. Uh, adaptable, again, text being used to convey the information. Uh, we're not just relying on the images saying, here's our enrollment data, you decide. We're actually explaining what's going on. And then, wide variety of audience. So, if any of you were here setting up, you kind of saw my background. It is my grandfather when I was a baby, looking at me, telling me a story. And that's my reminder to make sure that anyone who looks at it, whether it's a parent, a student, grandparent, someone from the community can understand the data versus just a few in the institution. Again, locking down the data, their main concern. I think we've had at least 20 meetings about how the data is secured, uh, which is, their, the Data Guardian's view is that it, the safety of the data falls to them no matter what uh, media. So even if it's in a Tableau dashboard, they feel that the safety of that data, whether that's secure, falls to them. And they will revoke my access to the data if uh, they feel it's not being secured enough, which I don't want to be responsible for for financial aid data or anything that's restricted so much. So really, it's just talking with them. That's the main thing in forming teams or uh, even working on dashboards with other departments, just being willing to talk to them. They have access to my calendar. If they have questions, they can either email me or call me or we set up a meeting. Um, and I. Again, shout out for Tableau. I use the Tableau Public. I just picked a couple of similar dashboards and showed them. It's like, okay, if we embed it or if we put it on Tableau Public, we can restrict it to where they can't download the data. They can download the image, but they can't download the data, so the data is secure in that way. And I'm sure they're going to be happy to hear about the ability to encrypt the data. Uh, and really, again, when it would go up, it would have the sheets hidden. If we did stories, we might hide the dashboards as well. So really using it across campus. So how can we use a dashboard across campus, which it's really easy to do at department level because that makes it easier. Because if you have a template, you can just restrict it to financial aid data or enrollment data, admissions, stuff like that. Uh, for us, we, not my rescue animals, uh, I tried, but they would not pose for that picture. Uh, don't take away their ownership. My whole philosophy is really Mr. Rogers, won't you be my neighbor? And that apparently uh, works well. And it's really going to the different departments saying, I want to help you tell your data story. How are you viewing that story? So that that eliminates the multiple stories of the data, but also it gives them the power over the data. And I don't tell them how it's going to be, which in turn, I haven't had, actually, I've had a couple people that we've had discussions about them telling me how it's going to be, but it's really working in partnerships. So I cover, I'm able to do this in Tableau and they cover, this is the story I want to tell. So it's really working together to come up with the dashboards. And it's not just me going, and here's your dashboard. So I was really trying to think of how to do the inclusive language. And really, it was looking at the conference's FAQs. But I came up with an idea when I saw that the code of conduct. So really, it's making sure that your language is as inclusive as possible and that people, if they don't feel 
it represents them well. If they don't feel like they're shown, that they can come up and being willing to change it. Uh, this also came about because I have a working relationship with our Women and Gender Equity Center's director. She's a part-time grant writer in our office, and we were trying to figure out how to account for the LGBT plus students and discussing with them, but like we don't want to be on a list somewhere that administration can use to discriminate against us. We're still trying to figure out how to uh, work that out. We're working with the students, but really it's making sure the students are accounted for how they want to. We have uh, gender as part of the voluntary disclosure on our applications. I'm thinking, if I remember applying for school, that that's usually where it is. But with iPads, we're kind of forced to gender our students. So it's really making sure we have the data and working with them, but we ha are restricted. So it's really doing a balancing act. So one of the things that I did was these are the old categories. And one of the things that stood out to me is that this is from iPads. Uh, gen ethnicity is more inclusive than gender because it has the unknown other ethnicity. Why can't we have that with gender? We only have a handful of students that may not identify uh, one gender or the other. They may have skipped the voluntary disclosure, whatever. Uh, so we really just updated it, uh, did more inclusive languaging on the ethnicities and did the undisclosed gender for the students that we don't really know the gender of. Kind of confused the uh, departments a little bit until we sat down with them, but it was worth our students feeling more included to kind of have the headache along the way. So now my uh, rescue dogs are animals. So really it's being data egalitarian. So what do I mean by that? The opposite is being a data elitist which that's Dodie, that is her table. No one else is able to be on that table. Uh, and that really demonstrates it because the elitists, they have overly complex dashboards that only a few people can understand. Uh, and they have to be present for the person to understand it. Uh, and they love silos because they have the power in the silos. Now, my rescue cats, Eleanor and Isabel, they are the uh, data egalitarians. They like to share. They want anyone who looks at the dashboard to be able to understand it without having to be present. And they love to destroy things. I'm trying to get them to destroy the dash the silos, but we're working on that. And really, it's making sure the data is shared across campus. It's not just the department's dashboards, it's really being concentrated, which we have, last week we have updated to Tableau server to kind of help give access to the data for a lot of the people. And the fun part, this is the twist. So having a transition plan. Uh, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, about four, a little over four years, people are with current institutions. By the age of 35, a quarter of employees would have worked five jobs. Technically, if you go by titles, I'm on my third, and I have a couple years to go. Uh, but you really need a smooth transition plan really for people leaving, but also for structural changers. What do I mean by that? Now, like I said, this is what it was previously. We lost an entire division uh, a month or so ago, uh, just restructuring, but that was the division the dashboard's for. So we have a dashboard that no one else is really interested in what do we do with it? And 
what we've learned with that is really my next project is converting it into our facts and figures because that's all the information you have in facts and figures. So it's really making sure it can still be used across campus and also use the data uh, with other projects. So it takes longer than you think to do an enrollment management dashboard, partially from working with people, but also I, do, I don't know if it's with our data warehouse but it's working in the data and cleaning it up. Uh, I was eager, I thought it would be only a couple months, because really it's making charts and putting everything in there. Uh, almost a year, and that was when the, uh, I could still be working on it, but that was when the division disappeared. And then multiple people are in the process. I had meetings with the Vice President of Enrollment Management Student Affairs. I had meetings with the Provost. I had meetings with the Registrar, um, Director of Financial Aid, Admissions, Deans. Everyone wants to participate. And it's really maintaining a need to maintain open lines with the data guardians because if I don't understand the data, People who look at my charts may not understand, but the guardians are able to go, oh, that means X, Y, and Z. And then, like I said, using it for multiple projects. Um, part of transitioning planning, but also just using the data. <laughs> so with this, so this is our dashboard. Basically, it tracks students from admissions to graduation, hopefully graduation. Maybe if it wants to load. So as you can see, it's kind of delayed. I did not save it as hyper. Might need to do that in the future. But they're able to filter it by different uh, populations that we've found going through our uh, ad hoc requests that people are interested in looking at, as well as uh, filter it to see different charts. And that's carried out throughout enrollment, uh, as well as throughout the whole thing. They're able to see a profile of our incoming freshmen, as well as their high school GPAs. Again, they can filter some, but we were in the process of linking up all the filters. They can see where our students come from. Nationally, it's slightly different in that we're mainly Ohio institution. And then retention, they can see spring to spring, fall to spring, fall to fall, spring to fall, whatever uh, version they need, also second year. And then the degrees awarded. Like I said, we're in the process of Updating this to facts and figures, which would add in um, a grade distribution and also uh, space utilization. But other than that, the dashboard really is dead until it becomes a fact book, because then it, it would be housed in our office. Um, and. Really with that, all I have for you is time for questions because I have found it's best to respond to different questions and also a handout to give you just the gist of uh, one side is our use of our dashboard data 
in a separate project. This was just an infographic resume we made in PowerPoint with Tableau charts. And the other side's just like the, what we found with best practices. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, This infographic was generated because uh, we were selected for the federal program review of our financial aid, and we had to have different information uh, available to them because of that. This is one instance. They are also participating in, oh, sure. Uh, they are also using the enrollment for judging how much financial aid is accepted, like they were surprised at the 33% in that. Uh, but going through and showing, it's like, no, that's true. Yes? Uh, we are in the process we were mainly focused on getting the server, Tableau server implemented. And after that, we're kind of viewing all the different security features through that. We're not necessarily going to use Active Directory because in our experience, it has just selected the first 100 people. Uh, we wanted more control, so we just um, assigned the licenses through that. Any other questions? Yeah. We have, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, how many users of Tableau do we have? Uh, in my office, there's my boss and myself. We have, and the registrar is another one. Uh, then with the server, we're giving access of viewers to our executive leadership, which is our VP and presidents sorry, our VPs and president, as well as our deans and uh, chairs of programs. Mm -hmm. So I remember calling this somewhere once a week in one of the um, conferences that we had is that um, we So the question was, how did we overcome the lack of validity checks with Genzibar to, for our dashboards? And really what we did was we formed a relationship with the registrar and um, like we have to do a 15th day enrollment report for the state. And with that, she runs a version of that and I run a version through Genzibar. So we just double check. It's like, okay, we have the same, uh, uh, total number of, of students. We have the same first time freshmen. We just make sure that way. And like with the graduation, because you have a general sense of what it needs to be, I talked to her and I'm like, this seems kind of low. And she was the one who figured out that we lacked at least 50 students per semester. So we really just ended up going with what she submitted to the state. We kind of look for the workarounds, for lack of better, for Genzibar. Okay, so you just, like, do the checks yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As far as I've found, there's no real way, because I have different, sorry, I have different access in Genzibar than the registrar, then there's no equal access, so we can't really check it without going through it by hand. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, we were in the process. Uh, we will not be releasing it to Tableau Public until we convert it to um, our facts and figures, or fact book. Um, but if you're in the process of doing something similar, my contact information is in here. I'm very willing to collaborate and kind of help brainstorm if you get stuck. Mm -hmm. 
so the question was, how do we uh, educate people who say the data is different from the different sources? It, part of it, it's kind of a two-fold process. One was creating the relationship with the registrar who sh each semester she will send out a, this is what the enrollment prediction is, this is what the 15th day report is, uh, and she'll send out reports, and then we just echo those reports. Uh, but also, we provide the program review data. So we will have uh, text in our emails and in our, uh, our Excel book that we give them. And that says, this is point in time, locked data. This is, and there's still the people that are like, it differs from what we have. Our program's healthier than that. So it's just talking with the people, unfortunately or fortunately, however you look at it. But saying, no, this is how we got the data. And sitting down with them with Tableau and showing them also helps. Also showing them the picture of the bear with the data also helps. Just showing, this holds this much data. Oh, so if you have visuals, they seem to like that. Any other questions? Okay, the only other thing is please fill out the um, survey. And thank you for coming. <laughs>